So a while back, I mentioned in one of my videos that I would be doing a video on the first inlay I did on my Onefinity CNC. So I did film that video, but then some other things came up and it kind of got put on the back burner and I actually forgot about it. And recently when I was going through and getting rid of some old raw video, I came across the inlay footage. I've done some more inlays since filming this video, so this may seem a little out of order, but I still think it's worth watching. I learned a lot doing this first inlay, and if you want to learn more about doing inlay on a CNC, I think this video will have some value for you. I have a hiccup with the first attempt that I try to fix in a completely ridiculous way that doesn't work at all, but then I figure out a better way, I get it all fixed up, and it turns out great in the end. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Today is a pretty exciting day, at least for me anyway, here on Matt Made It. Today I'm going to attempt my first inlay carve on my CNC machine. I recently built a large ingrain cutting board. If you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you've probably seen pictures of that. And today I'm going to do an inlay carve into that cutting board. So this is probably a pretty simple process for a lot of people. But like I've said, I've never done this before. But all my research and planning is done. I have my tool paths all made up and I'm ready to go. I'm expecting this to be like a lot of things in life. You might be a little nervous or scared before the first time you do it, but once you get through that first experience, you realize it's really not that big of a deal. That said, I really don't want to mess up this big cutting board I just made, but I'm pretty confident. <coughs> Water. But I'm pretty confident I have everything dialed in, so let's move over to the CNC room and we'll get this carve started. While I'm moving over there and getting my camera and my lights and everything all set up, this would be a great time for you to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you get notified when new videos come out. Sound good? All right, I'll see you over there. Now, originally when I was designing this carve, my thought was I was gonna carve it with a 60 degree V-bit because that's what I had. But the more videos I watched and the more I read about doing inlay carving, I learned that it's better to go with like a 30 degree or even a 20 degree V-bit to do your carves. And the reason for that is it gives you a deeper carve which provides more surface area for your glue up. And more surface area for your glue means a stronger bond. I just wanna quickly clarify what I said right there. While using a more angled bit can produce a deeper carve with greater detail, it's not just going to automatically do that. The depth of your carve will be determined by the parameters that you set, not by the bit that you use. Let me show you what I mean. So here I have two drawings I did, one representing a 60 degree V-bit and the other representing a 30 degree V-bit. The drawings are the same as far as start depth and flat depth and all of those carve parameters. The only difference is the angle of the V-bit that's being used. So let's focus on this 60 degree V-bit drawing and we'll really go over how the inlay process works. So an inlay is made up of two pieces. First you carve a pocket into the cutting board or sign or whatever you're inlaying into and that is to accept the plug, which is the material that's being inlaid into your finished product. So of course, you want a nice tight fit between your pocket and your plug right at the surface here of your finished material. You wanna leave a space between the bottom of your pocket and the top of your plug for glue to flow into. It's also a good idea to leave a gap between the top of your pocket material and the bottom of your plug that allows you to run a bandsaw blade right in that gap, cutting away the bulk of your excess plug material. Or you could use a clearing path on your CNC machine and carve away this excess plug material. Leaving that gap gives you some wiggle room on doing this carve. You don't have to be so precise with it. So the easiest way I found to set up these carves, that leaves you nice tight contact at the surface. It leaves you a good space for your glue to flow and a good gap for cutting away your excess material is on the pocket side. I do a start depth of zero and a flat depth of 0.3 inch. And on the plug side, I do a start depth at 0.2 inch with a flat depth of 0.1. Remember the start depth you choose on your plug is how much of that plug will be inserted into the pocket. And the flat depth you choose will determine the depth of your glue space and the depth of your gap. So this setup leaves me a 0.1 inch gap for glue to flow. 
a 0.1 inch gap to get my bandsaw blade in there and cut away my excess material. And it gives me a mating surface of two tenths of an inch between the pocket and the plug, which is enough material to give me a nice strong glue up. Now, if you don't need a lot of detail or for certain carves, a 60 degree V bit would probably work just fine for doing an inlay. But let me show you why in some situations, a 30 degree or even a 15 degree bit would be a better choice. First of all, and I think this is pretty obvious, that the steeper angle you can carve, the more detail you're gonna get. That's why if I need a lot of detail, I'll always go with a 30 degree bit or even one of these 15 degree bits. But there's another reason you might wanna go with one of these less angled bits that doesn't only have to do with detail. Think about the inlay I'm doing in this video. I'm inlaying into a cutting board. Now, if you use a cutting board or a chopping block the way it's intended, you're gonna be cutting and chopping on the surface of that board. Over time, it's gonna get scraped, scratched, gouges in it, maybe stained by certain types of foods. And eventually, if the surface gets beat up enough, you're gonna to wanna to sand it down or resurface it. Think about resurfacing or sanding down the top of this carve. As you lose surface material, your inlay piece will start to grow in size. And the more angle you have where these two pieces come together, the faster that inlay piece will distort. So just keep in mind that while you want some angle here to make it easier to assemble your pieces, the less angle you have and the deeper your inlay goes, the more you're able to sand down or resurface your final product without distorting that inlay. So I hope that all makes sense. Any questions or comments you have about my theory of inlay, post them down below and we'll talk about it. One more thing I wanted to mention that's very important when doing your inlay design is that when you're going from your pocket to your plug, be sure to do a mirror image of your design. Even if you think the design is perfectly symmetrical, always do a mirror image when you're generating the tool path for your plug. The slightest difference between the two sides of your design, even if you can't see it, will make it so your plug does not fit into your pocket. Another good idea is to always do a test fit before you apply your glue. All right, let's get back to the main video. So I went ahead and I bought a 30 degree V-bit to do this carve. I got this one right here. Now I got that bit off of Amazon and I'll put a link to it down below if you're interested in picking one up. So the first part of the carve will be the female side of the inlay in the cutting board itself. And then I'll swap out to this piece of ash and do the male side. All right, here we go. All set up, ready to start the carve. All right, guys, I have the piece of ash on the spoil board. It's being held in place with some of this x fasten tape and a couple hold downs. Should be very secure and not move at all. Now this, of course, will be a mirror image of the first carve. Just carve out a mirror image, and when you flip it over to insert it, it should match up perfect. So the first thing I'll do is a clearing pass with this 1 8 inch end mill. Then I'll install the 30 degree V-bit to do the detail carve. Now, of course, I don't need to clear off all of this material. I just need enough of a border around the words where I can cut off my waste without messing them up. So I know I have some material over here and on this side that won't be carved away. So I can put my hold downs there and they shouldn't be touched by the router bit. This is all set up and ready to go. So let's get to it. The total carve time on this insert is a little over two hours. So I'll film some here and there, but mostly I'm just gonna skip to the end. You're welcome. So it looks like the clearing passes went really well and I'm ready to start the finishing pass on this carve. So let's get that going and finish this up. Mm. 
Now that's it, it's all done. Let's see how it looks. I was a little concerned with some of these smaller pieces maybe breaking off in the car, but they all look really good. Everything looks intact. We'll get it off of here and get it cleaned up. All right guys, I'm back over in the main shop. I used a bandsaw to cut away the excess on this carve, and now I'm ready for a test fit. Let's see how this fits. Oh, I think that's it. So that's it, it dropped right in there. I don't wanna push it down too far and get it stuck, but um, yeah, it seems like it fits just right. So I'll get some glue on this. I'm gonna use Type Bond 3, and that should glue this up really nice. All right, that looks like we're fully seated everywhere. I'm gonna put some weight on top of this and I'll come back to it tomorrow. So it's the next day and I'm ready to carve off that excess material. So the carve itself went really well. It took off all the waste material and left just a little bit proud of the surface of the cutting board, which is just what I wanted, but I do have a problem. Let's go take a look at it. So here's the inlay and at first glance, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna bring you in close to this area right in here. So as you can see here, there are several spots where the insert didn't fill in all the way. There's a gap right here in this A, the T, the I, all these letters right here. And then it goes over into the next word where they're not filled in all the way. It's just this section right here towards the top of the carve. I think it was fully seated. So I'm pretty sure the problem was with the carve on the inlaid piece itself. Now I haven't worked a lot with ingrain wood, but I did notice when I was gluing up that ash, it wasn't nearly as tight a grain as this maple or the walnut. So maybe ash isn't a great wood to use for delicate work like this. But I am gonna try to save this by gluing little pieces of wood in all these gaps. It's gonna take some time and be a little tedious, but it's better than trashing this whole project. All right, I tried fixing that. I spent way too much time on it. It looks ridiculous. It's not gonna work. Let me show you what I did and we can all laugh at it together. And then I'll tell you what I'm gonna do to actually fix this. All right, guys, here we are with my attempted fix on this. I just took pieces of ash, stuck them down in all these little cracks and crevices that were left over, glued them in there. And there's still a bunch of gaps that are filled with glue that I'm not gonna be able to get wood into. I'll go ahead and sand this down and show you exactly how bad it actually looks. And then I have an idea for a way to actually fix this. All right, here it is all sanded up. Um, it's not 100% sanded down to finish, but it's good enough to see what's going on. There's lots of places on here where it looks really nice, but it's up in this area here where the insert didn't seat fully into the cutting board. As you can see all in here, there's still quite a few gaps and I'm not gonna be able to fix this as it sits right now. So I think the best thing for me to do right now is just to recarve this. So I opened my design in VCarve Pro and I made the design 0.01 inch larger than it previously was. And then I simply recalculated each tool path at that larger size. That should clear out all the existing insert material and make a nice pocket for a new insert. So the only thing left to do is to go carve it and see if I can save this project. So it looks like I got that lined up really well and it carved really nice and I think this is going to work out. So now I just have to carve the insert and this time when I glue it in I'm going to clamp it really well. So I did a test fit. The pieces go together nice and tight. I'm also going to be sure to clamp it much better this time. So I'm hopeful that this is going to work out. All right guys, here we are out of the clamps. I took it back over to the CNC. I made up a quick little surfacing tool path for it to clean off most of the excess. And then I've just been using my jack plane here just to clean it up a little bit. And I got it down pretty good. And it looks like this is going to be completely successful. So I'm really happy with this. 
It looks like it's inserted in evenly everywhere. It's filled all the gaps, and um, I think this is gonna look really nice once it's all sanded up and finished. So I gave the cutting board a good sanding last night, and I'm really happy with how the inlay turned out. So this was a great project. It was a little frustrating at some points, but overall it turned out great and I'm really happy I did it and I'm looking forward to do more of these inlays in the future. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more content like this, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you get notified when new videos come out. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you for the next one. Oh man, I thought this thing was toast. I am so happy I was able to save this.